Uh, Drew, can you go ahead and spell your first and last name for me? Sure. My name is Drew Hendricks, D-R-E-W-H-E-N-D-R-I-C-K-S. And give me a, a title for you for this story. Like, what, how would you describe yourself? I'm a public records researcher. Okay, perfect. And you live in what city? I live in Port Hadlock, Washington. Okay, got it. Um, let's kind of go back to the beginning a little bit. And I know you and I chatted over the phone. Uh, you had explained that you were interested in obtaining photos of Seattle Police Bike Patrol officers, correct? Yes. My, my Can you original explain to me again why? My original request was for bicycle officers uh, because we had incidents happening where bicycle officers attacked demonstrators and didn't have uh, name tags clearly visible in the video of these incidents. So we wanted you're to. You're talking specifically about May Day, is that right? Um, I'm talking specifically about almost any demonstration in Seattle um, is covered by Seattle police bike cops. Sorry, explain that one more time. Were you talking, was it, a, was it regarding May Day or maybe Black Lives Matter, do you remember? Both, as well as Martin Luther King Day and other demonstrations in Seattle. Okay, We're, your cell signal is dropping out a little. Are you on Wi-Fi or cell? You know? um, I'm on internet. Okay, you're on internet. Direct okay, connection. Clear. So let's just keep going, and then I'll, I'll, I may have you restate something if you come across being garbled. If that makes understood. Sense. Understood. Um, and we are the incident that sort of triggered all of this was um, the incident involving Jesse Hagopian. Is that right? Yeah, I believe that was January 2015. And then in preparation for May Day 2015, I requested these bicycle officers' pictures. I think that was in April of 2015 that I made that request. What was the response from Seattle Police to your request? Um, they ignored it until October and then denied it in October and November of 2015. Okay. What did you do as a, as, as a result of that response? Um, well, I, I talked about it with other journalists. Um, I talked about it with a website called Photography is Not a Crime. Um, and I think they took up a wider request. I had asked just for the pictures of the bicycle officers um, because I also wanted a roster of who rides bikes for the Seattle Police Department and does demonstration management. And to this date, the Seattle Police have never given me a list of specifically which officers those are. Okay, I'm, I'm going to back you up. I'm, I'm going to need you to... Okay, uh, we had some... We had some difficulties getting that from okay. because of the way the audio recorded. So I'm going to back you up a little bit. Um, start with, if you can back up to how you had reached out to other journalists who made the request bigger, if that makes okay. sense, or broader. When my request was refused, Seattle Police Department refused my request because they don't consider me a journalist, because I don't work in the profession for a paid position. And when they re rejected my request, I talked to other journalists who are more widely published and the, uh, the website out of Florida, um, Photography is Not a Crime, I believe they took up that request. One of their members took up that request and made that request broader than mine had been. Okay. And it's your understanding that they requested everybody an SPD, correct? All I'm not codes. certain. I'm not certain. It, it, I read the uh, temporary restraining order, and it seems to be on behalf of the Seattle Police Officers Guild as well as their traffic enforcement people and possibly other categories of, of employees, so I can only speculate based on that. I wasn't shown the request before it went in. How did you learn of this uh, restraining order? Um, I learned of this restraining order because public records researchers in Washington State uh, talk to each other fairly regularly by private channels um, and coordinate with each other because we get a lot of pushback from police departments on public records. What was your reaction to the restraining order? 
Um, I, well, I'm not named in the restraining order. Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, my a police officer shouldn't be afraid of their own face. Um, there's no reason for a police officer who's working in good faith to be afraid of people knowing what they look like. Um, and I'm personally, I, I want to live in a free country and a free country doesn't need, nor can it really tolerate secret police. Let me back you up too, because I remember you had mentioned to me over the phone, there was a reason why you wanted these photographs and it was a very mm -hmm. specific one. Can you go into that for me? Sure. In January of 2015, a police officer attacked Jesse Hagopian with pepper spray at a Martin Luther King March. And there was a lot of speculation about who that person might be, but we didn't have a photo reference to tell us which person that was. And we couldn't read their badge because the camera wasn't close enough to see it. Uh, so we wanted a photo reference beginning then um, to basically be able to identify which police officers were acting badly. The foundation of accountability is identity. You can't hold somebody accountable if you don't know who did what. So we needed those photographs in order to hold police officers accountable for their actions in public. Mm -hmm. I'm going to back you up right there because... <clears throat> You, you dropped out a little bit there, and I, okay. what you said right there is really important. Uh, in that specific video, um, you had talked about the gear that officers wear and yes. how it makes it difficult to identify them. Can you go into that again for me? Oftentimes when police officers wear padded riot armor, it will cover the normal uniform element that tells you what their identity is. And different officers solve this in different ways. Some of them put duct tape on a portion of their breastplate and write their name on that. Often they write their name after the tape has been applied and it's a very uneven surface, a very shiny surface, not very photographic friendly, very low contrast, black panel. Drew, on sorry gray. about it. You're, okay. you're, we're having sorry. a difficulty with the connection again. Okay. It's okay. No, no, no. I, I just want to stop you before you go all the way through because I'm going to have to have you say it again anyway. Okay. Um, Hang on for one second. Hey, guys, is that internet connection difficult on our end, or is that on his? Do you know? Okay. It's hard to tell, right? It's wired on my end. Let's try it again, because it's such important. I, you, okay. you make such an important point, okay. and, and so I really want to make sure that we get it recorded clearly here. Why are these photos so important, especially when it comes to police who are on protest patrol? Um, police officers, when they wear padded riot armor, often cover up par portions of their identity badge and some officers solve that problem by trying to wear duct tape as an identity badge on their armor and that is a very low contrast very hard surface to photograph um, especially in a situation where things are dynamic um, so we need photographs of what the police officers look like so that we can narrow down which officer might have undertaken a particular action in demonstration management The Police Officers Guild is taking the position that, you know, officers could be targeted or threatened, especially mm -hmm. in light of, you know, ISIS having a kill list lately and some officers in other departments have been put on that list and, and other possible threats to police officer safety. What is your response to that? Uh, police officers have listed addresses, uh, both in the Washington State Voters Database and in the phone book, you can look up where the police offices are and police officers walk in and out of that place all day in uniform. Um, if somebody wanted to attack people just because they're police officers, they don't need to go out and attack a specific police officer. Um, the face of a police officer it doesn't make them more targetable or less targetable. I still don't know where they live just because I know what their face looks like. But the Washington State Secretary of State publishes that information every day for free on their website. So, you know, what can I say? It, it's, I know that you, I know this restraining order isn't, you know, naming you specifically, mm -hmm. but your feelings about the restraining order like this? Uh, well, it's a restraint on free speech. Um, this is, the, the photographs that we're requesting are specifically by statute allowed by the legislature to be given to media outlets. It's in the law, in the revised code of Washington, that these photographs are a category of, of information that's to be given to the media. Um, they decided I'm not the media, but they 
basically, um, you know, I'm getting distracted here. Um, let me restart. The, please ask your question again. I'm sorry. It's okay. Say it because I need you to say it anyway. Right. Because uh, right. no, your your reaction, your thoughts about. I, I know you're not named in the restraining right. order, but mm -hmm. what are your thoughts about it? Uh, my my thoughts about the restraining order is that it's a violation of free speech rights. It's interfering with the media's ability to get information that the legislature very specifically wrote into the revised code of Washington that they intend for the media to have about law enforcement employees, namely those photographs. Got it. Have you been in touch with PIN, PINAC? I mean, have you, do you know what their intent is with these photos and will they fight the restraining order? Um, photography is not a crime, regularly publishes photographs of police officers that are involved in confrontations, especially over public photography. Um, they do news every day of the week, 24-7, um, 365, about police abuses and contacts with the public. And so I imagine when they write news stories about Seattle police officers who come into contact with the public and come into conflict over video uh, policy, that they'll use those photographs to illustrate who those officers are. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, but you have you don't know if they plan on. I notice there's a hearing scheduled in a couple of weeks. Do you have any idea if they're going to fight this? I would assume that they are. Um, I don't know. They're not coordinating with me as far as what their mm -hmm. legal strategy might be. Okay, got it. Is there anything else you think it's important for people to know? Uh, the Seattle Police Department regularly withholds public records illegally. Um, deletes emails, um, withheld these photographs from me because they decided I wasn't a journalist, which they don't actually have the right to decide um, under the First Amendment. That's not a decision that government gets to decide. People decide whether they're doing journalism, not government. Um, you don't need a license to be a journalist. The First Amendment gives everybody the right to do this. Um, but I have personally experienced pushback both from the court security system in Pierce County in 2010 as well as from public records officers at Seattle Police in 2014 and 2015 and now in 2016 as well. Um, I don't have the money to sue them, but I certainly have enough legal cause to. Okay. Um, last question for you. You had mentioned that there were other police departments mm -hmm. who have actually given you these photos. when you Yeah, Olympia. Them. Olympia Police Department gave me a list of, uh, gave me their photographs, their ID photographs of all of their officers. So other police departments mm -hmm. think it's okay to do it? Yes. Most police departments, in fact, think it's okay to do this. I've also gotten photographs, Got similar photographs right. from Washington Wonderful. State Patrol. Huh. Washington State, did you say patrol? Correct. Okay. I asked them for all their new officers, their new um, troopers that so were just signing Washington in. So both Washington State Patrol and mm -hmm. Olympia Police have giving you the photos that you've requested. Correct. Okay, that's important to know. Do you go by Drew or Andrew? I go by Drew. Drew, okay, wonderful. Uh, guys, do you need to, Tate, are you okay? I'm okay, it sounds like Bob's good. Good, good, We're good. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. Enjoy Thank you. your day in pa ha Port Hadlock. I shall. Thank you. Okay.